Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today it's time for another episode in my Let's Terraform series and we could call today's episode Let's Refactor because it's it's become time to kind of talk about how you can optimally arrange your Terraform template files and how you can use modules. Modules is perhaps the most powerful feature in Terraform. So let's start. Okay, so I'm building on top of some things that I have shown in my earlier episodes. If you haven't seen them, by the way, it makes sense to go and watch them right now. But uh, today's uh, content is going to be centered around the question, how can you distribute, when, when, once you start getting a lot of stuff in your template, how can you distribute it and how you can create those reusable modules in Terraform? So I have all already earlier mentioned that there is no special magic with the names of the Terraform uh, files. Actually, I have been using no special magic.tf file until now, and it's been working marvelously. But uh, today we will change that because we might figure out some more sensible names. So let's say that I actually want to uh, distribute this file a little bit to a separate part. So Right now I'm having everything in one file, so let's create a few new files. So how about having a main file? That would be kind of the main stuff that's important. You might have something named like this, or might have something more spe specific, but I have kind of a point here coming up later why I'm doing it like so. Main point is just that I'm going to put part of the stuff here. And let's actually dive in and put immediately some of this stuff. We could put the... It's up to you if you like to put the Terraform and provider. We could put those here in the main file. We could also create one more file for them, whatever you like. But I am going to leave the variables out. I'm just going to put the resources in, in the main file. So I'm cut pasting. I have a little bit of existing Terraform code and don't worry about this. This is just creating a fancy bucket and it's something I'm going to build on top of later. Okay, so now we have main file that contains the basic setup. Actually, we could put that in providers TF. Let's do, do that as well. So we are going to have providers TF and do the provider configuration there. Okay, so now I have providers TF doing the basic config scaffolding. Then we have main TF having a bunch of resources and uh, I want two more files, so variables tf is quite typical for tada variables. So I can uh, move my variables there, like so. And then finally we can, in no special magic, I'm only having output. So let's do output file or output file, however you like to name it, like so. Okay, so. I made uh, everything in my no special magic file go away, it's empty. So instead I have a main TF for my resources and then I'm separately tracking outputs here. It's a little bit easier to kind of find them this way. And then I'm having variables. If you have a lot of variables, again, much easier to separate them from your resources. And then I put the kind of ones of uh, providers information here. So that covers the uh, main idea how you can, once your templates start getting heavy, how you can refactor them to be a bit nicer. You just spend a little bit of time. You can use these names that I gave you or figure out something else. Doesn't really matter, but it's a good, definitely a good habit. Start chopping things to manageable pieces so that your brain doesn't get overtasked if you try to understand what's going on here. Now the kind of downside is that you might need to uh, jump across the files a little bit more, but uh, it's a trade-off. I think it makes sense as long as you don't chop 200 files, then it gets a little bit more heavy as well. But for 100 files, I have another trick. One of the most powerful features of Terraform is the module system. And by the way, again, very well documented in HashiCorp pages. But by now, if you have seen my other episodes, you know where to find them. So just find the part about modules and read it immediately after this little video, okay? But modules are among the most powerful features of Terraform. So if you use Terraform, haven't really used modules, today is the time to start learning. Best time. Yesterday was better, but 
days, second best, okay? So how do modules work? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked because you want to probably create a fol folder and then you probably want to create a folder for each, each module. So let's create a super bucket folder and this is my module. So how do you declare a module in Terraform? Well, that's very simple. You grab whatever files you want to put there and you just drop them there. So let's grab main, let's grab outputs, let's grab variables. I actually meant to remove these, so let's do so. The providers, you could argue whether you want it there or not, I think you can actually do without. I'm going to delete it from there. So in my module folder, I end up having variables, things that go in, outputs, things that go out, and then the resources that you end up creating. Okay, so my point being that your module is just a bunch of Terraform. No special magic. The module interface is defined by variables and output. So what goes in, what goes out in truly functional way. And uh, IDs that you define uh, do not matter anymore. They are just module scope. So when you are using this one, uh, you can reuse the same IDs. Doesn't really matter. So only thing that matters is the variables and uh, outputs. So let's go here. I'm going back to my no special magic file and doing some special magic again. So uh, I want to use my module. Let's do, do that. Module. My. Fun. Module. Okay. So the thing that you do here is uh, pretty much point to the source of the module. And your options are to use a local reference or remote reference. Remote reference is extremely powerful. You can go to Terraform global registry or you can go to public or private GitHub repositories for the modules. Very powerful way to reuse. But we are not going to do that today. So I'm just going to use my own module because today was about refactoring and that's what I'm doing. So I'm doing this instead, module super bucket. And that's it. So at this point, uh, I just told that I want to put this one here. Please, let's use it. And uh, there is some variables, but both variables have default values. And this means that I don't need to pass them in. I could. So I would have the option of passing environments or bucket name. But let's do that. But before that, I'm just going to verify that my template works. And by the way, if you mess with the modules, you need to initialize um, again. So Terraform init, um, it was now able to find the providers, but it's also making note of the custom modules that you have. So my fun module is now initialized. And then I can do Terraform plan. And this is like my syntax check to make sure I didn't do anything stupid yet, because even though it's not making any changes, it's uh, kind of uh, verifying the syntax that everything is okay, everything can be found. So it's a very good way to do a quick run to see that your template is okay after refactoring, okay? So pretty cool so far. Now I wanted to take this one step further because in my earlier demonstration, I showed how to do uh, like uh, iterations, how to do multiple modules. And now we really have a super bucket because uh, super bucket is not just one bucket, but it also has uh, extra definitions and configurations already for it. So what if we want one for each environment that we have? Well, I'm glad you asked because we can actually, I'm not using this variable here. So I'm going to move it to the main template. Let's have a couple of environments and let's combine my fun module with, uh, with the uh, count meta argument and count meta argument is going to loop as many times as we have environments. So I'm combining expression with a built-in function and meta argument. I did this in the previous video of the series. Okay. Should be a little bit familiar. Oh, by the way, var, there's the namespace. It's a variable. The color coding let me know that I made a blunder here. 
So let's do a bunch of modules. And again, we could do the plan just to do the quick syntax check. All good so far. Now I'm creating nine things. So three times the module and module is creating three resources. So there is a lot of 10x power flowing from me right now. As I mentioned earlier, this is crazy powerful. Uh, the limit of how many resources you can create in a ridiculously fast time with ridiculously little code. The limit is only your wallet. So everything costs money pretty much. Almost everything costs money. Okay. But a few 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 buckets is not too expensive, so I can do that. So uh, we could elaborate a little bit. I want to show you how to use module uh, variables. So the module that I'm creating has one remaining variable, and that's the bucket name. So what we can then do is pass it. It's my defined variable, but it's like any variable. My stupid bucket. I'm sure somebody has already created this one. So let's put some random noise there and then let's put uh, the counter. We could have the running counter like uh, uh, count index index. Not actually IntelliSense is not catching that, but there is count index. So I could use that one and then I would have three uh, copies of my stupid bucket and so forth. So uh, this is kind of very powerful stuff that we are using here. Main thing is that even if you're not interested in reusing uh, your, your things and or even if you're not interested in creating 100 stupid buckets, uh, even still it makes, uh, makes a kind of, it's worth it to refactor things using modules because you can make really expressive top level templates. So it's easier for people to already read your code provided that your modules have very good namings not like i'm doing here but very good namings for variables and uh, module and whatever ids you are using so you are already getting a lot of power from there just for purposes of refactoring but if you add there the possibility to reuse within your own code within your team within uh, teams in your organization and uh, share it distribute it to open source and share it to the world and by the way, there is a crazy amount of very good and extremely powerful Terraform modules already in existence. I still try to find a good balance because I don't like to depend on 100 other people's code. But I do like to reuse some well-maintained and trustworthy modules and then uh, use some modules of my own. So that's typically what I, what I combine. I try to keep this video short, so that's it for today's video. Uh, thanks for watching and remember remember to click the buttons, drop feedback, share the link if you like this stuff. You can also make requests for the upcoming content, but I still have some ideas remaining. So there will be a few more Terraform videos anyway. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.